You're listening to Technomics, connecting you to insights on digital transformation and the marketplace with your hosts, Robin Ituli and Jeremy Nelson. The host's opinions are their own. Enjoy the show. Jeremy, there are few things bigger than big data. I feel like this is a setup for a joke. No, I have no, I have no punchline to this. It's really, it, it's extremely huge and it's a big opportunity. It's a big business problem to tackle and it requires huge amounts of infrastructure in order to make sense of it all. Oh, absolutely. And even beyond that, just a lot of really smart people to know how to sift through the massive amounts of information collected from the endless amount of endpoints, users, and sensors that we're putting out there these days. And the whole point of it is to run smarter, right? So all of that information really has to be aimed at a single goal, a strategic objective. And then the flip side of that coin is you can use all of that information to help you make those strategic decisions. But in the view of the customer, every single piece of that data had better improve their experience. Absolutely. It's the sacrifice. If you're willing to give up that information, it better benefit you somehow. And there's a million different ways you can slice and dice it. And we have a great conversation coming up about the possibilities that exist here. Absolutely. Who better to talk to about big data than someone who specializes in big data? We're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will continue this conversation on big data with a very special guest. And now a word from our sponsor. Engaging your customers with modern technology requires a modern platform and infrastructure. Enter Microsoft Azure. All right, I have to stop you right there, Robin. Is it Azure or Azure? You know, we had this conversation in season one, and I believe what we landed on is it is about the color, which is in fact Azure. Awesome, I'm glad that's finally put the rest. Although now I've said it so many times, I feel like I'm saying it weird. It's like spoon. (laughs) We digress. The important message that you need to take away from this sponsorship is that with Azure, you can build faster, move quicker, and empower your organization to reach new heights. If you contact an insight specialist, they can help you find out how implementing Azure will open up a new realm of possibility. Thank you for staying with Technomics. I'm Robin Aitouli, and today I have a special guest that comes from the blue metal wing of Insight, and his name is Rahil Retiwala. Rahil is a really deeply experienced data scientist, Internet of Things scientist, information technologies and systems guru. And so we've brought him in to continue this discussion around evolving by the data, using that information to collect, analyze, visualize, and actualize for the business. Welcome to the show, Raheel. Thank you. It's great to be here. Did I do you justice on that welcome? Is there Uh, You know, I like to position myself as the peanut gallery because it is safe. Um, But you are really in this fascinating area of technology right now. Can you expand on what you've been up to the last few years and how big data has maybe even changed your career? Sure. I mean, uh, it's it's a significant amount of innovation happening in the uh, in the data space over the last five years um, across many different uh, many different capabilities. If you think about how you acquire data, what you do with data, how you um, use data to, to understand um, and predict you know, your business outcomes, uh, every single element of how data has been used or collected has been impacted over the last five years. And more importantly, uh, somebody who has spent about 10 years at Microsoft um, working on, you know, business intelligence and data warehousing in the early 2000s and and, mid 2000s. It's been fascinating to see the uh, rapid rise of open source innovation, specifically in this space. Uh, And personally, that has impacted, you know, my career, going from traditional enterprise software, um, commercial software to more of an open source software model as well. We hear a lot about big data. It's been a 
a major buzzword in the industry for a while now. To what degree do you think that it is just a buzzword? And what is it really? How is it really helping businesses? Well, one of the, you know, if you, to, to really answer that question, let's, let's evaluate what are the driving factors where the need for big data or anything around data today is required. And if you think about what those fact, driving factors are, it really starts with changing customer expectations. You know, customers are, um, are, are, are used to now uh, receiving real-time, you know, insights, real-time information, expect instant gratification, uh, you know, look for personalized engagement. And when you think about how larger enterprises that have been around for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, how do you pivot and respond to those changing dynamics? That's the, that's the driving factor. How do you convert that into net new revenue opportunities? That's the driving factor. How do you, you know, how do you make your operating model and how you actually get work done to serve the new products and services to your customers. How does that get impacted? And that's where the use of big data uh, is really applicable. It's the forcing function to ensure that you, you as an organization have the ability to respond to these changing dynamics. So it's very real and it's uh, very, uh, very, very critical in my opinion. Critical, but also huge, right? I mean, the estimates that are out there are something to the effect of 2.5 quintillion bytes of data every single day that we're creating as a, a very broad group of consumers, which, by the way, is the equivalent of stacking books from the sun to Pluto and back again. But how do you operationalize out of so much data and then optimize it, right? I mean, I mean, how do you get to a granular action item for the business to improve a customer experience out of that kind of vastness? It really goes back to thinking about what are the factors that, you know, are influencing your business right now and aligning the use of data to those particular initiatives. For example, um, you know, you may be an enterprise that is in the middle of a business transformation, whether it may mean that you're thinking about from a, going from becoming a hardware company to a more software and services company. You're thinking about, you know, going from a brick and mortar to a digital business. Or you're thinking about, you know, moving away from, you know, CapEx-based operating model or business model to a more providing a subscription-based services and software. Now, as, the, as those transformations are, uh, are, are being uh, thought of, it is critical that you align the use of that data and how you operationalize that data to those specific initiatives. Uh, another example is around uh, you know, process innovation. How do you improve you know, the things you build, the services you deliver, the way you support your customers? All of those have an impact on when and what data needs to be operationalized. So it really has to be driven from top down to understand what are the strategies for my organization this year and how I'm going to actually use and operationalize data to meet those. So based on that answer, in your opinion, which of these questions matters more? What do we want to do because of the data, or what technology do I need to solve this? Well, your first question, um, I think, is more, more about um, is assuming that you know, data is going to tell you what you should do. Um, and you know, that's not necessarily you know, the case, because the data is not necessarily going to tell you, you know, what, what you should do. It's going to be more that you, you know, your people have, um, you know, gut reactions. They've been in the industry for, for a long time. Uh, they, they understand the customers. They understand the channel. They understand, you know, the processes that it takes to actually, um, you know, get a product or a service out to, out to the market. So, you know, we want to make sure that that knowledge is incorporated in the method and how you're using data. 
uh, and that's what you need. You know, that's what really the uh, what you want. You know, from the data is to take that organizational knowledge, embed it inside the you know uh, inside the data itself, and then use that to actually influence you know outcomes that you're looking for. As far as what technology do I need to solve this? I think that is not as a dire of a, uh, a situation in the sense that you don't necessarily need to you know worry that you know technology. Um, you know, is is of a bigger concern than the actual outcomes from the data. I feel like the innovation and in technology is is so rapid, and and the vendors, the traditional vendors and the open source vendors are doing actually a pretty incredible job of making it easier and easier and more integrated to actually build and bring you know new capabilities or data specific capabilities into existing products and services. So basically, the the technology becomes the how, right? It's, it's how you are able to bring that information to you. The data is the what, but we still leave businesses in the position of ascertaining the why out of all that data. Are there strategies and tools out there that businesses are looking to in order to kind of get to the center of the golden circle on that? You know, that's, uh, that's a, uh, it's like one of those, uh, Holy Grail things, right? Where you expect the data to tell you why why things are happening, and that's even in the statistical um, um, field. You know, for a very long time, it's been a, quite a it's been quite a, a challenge to to you know balance the causal versus you know identifying factors that influence. So basically, saying that you know I can tell you what factors influence a certain outcome to happen with some you know predictive and some higher level probability versus telling you exactly why some things happen so where we are today is that technology has an, you know uh, the advancements in advanced analytics and technologies around machine learning are making it easier and easier for us to get a better sense of all the different factors that influence certain outcomes so if you're interested in knowing what you know what influences customers to churn well, there, there are models that can help you determine what those factors are. But can they tell you exactly why? Probably not. But you're better off at least getting some indication of what those factors are. Now, what's interesting about factors is factors can be internal and external to your business. You know, I've, I've, you know I can tell you uh, uh, maybe a couple of years ago, I was working with a very large telecom company, and we were trying to understand what factors influenced you know, customer experience as far as streaming video was concerned on a 4G or LTE network. And, you know, there are many factors, as you can imagine, why if you're driving down the highway and, you know, you're in the passenger seat, hopefully, and, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're kind of going through your Facebook feed and as you go through and somebody shared a video and, you know, the video starts playing immediately and it's buffering and it's not giving you the, you know, the, the fluidity in, in, in the streaming, so you're getting upset. But, you know, there are many factors that influence that. The question is, what are those factors? Are they in control of that telecom provider? Or are they out of control? And as that telecom provider, they, their first inclination is to assume that it's internal factors that influence that because they are controllable. But rather, they are actually external factors. It could be that because it was, a, you know, it was 5.30 and everyone happened to be, you know, uh, stuck on a you know, stuck on a, uh, on a traffic jam and happened to be that most of the customers were, people were customers of this particular telco. Could also be that because there was a big event going on close by. So there are different factors and the problem is that enterprises have never been able to combine the internal factors and external factors to understand truly what causes and influences things to happen. And that's where the technology has gained a lot of momentum over the last few years making that more and more easier to do. When we come back, we'll have a chance to speak much more in depth about big data. You will not want to miss this. Jeremy, do you ever feel like you have a hard time figuring out what the most important technology news is on a weekly basis? Always. I never seem to know where to go. There's so much of it. So much. Fortunately for people like you, there is the script, which is one of our newsletters that's about 
the news, best practices, and current trends in technology. We have scoured the web and we've looked for only the most important things. So if, like Jeremy, you need a concise, valuable way to get the most out of the technology headlines, visit insight.com to subscribe to The Script, their IT headlines worth repeating. So let me expand on a piece of the example that you just gave, because I deeply appreciate your sentiment about making sure you're checking your Facebook feed from the passenger seat. It's an important point. Please don't social media and drive. But let's talk about how complex that potentially gets when we're talking about the expansion of the Internet of Things and the ambient bandwidth around us that is required. Take, for example, a day in the not too distant future when we are all the passengers in the cars that are being driven by themselves. How how does how does the Internet of Things complicate the internal and external controllable factors with something like this? Well, if you look, I mean, that's a great question. I mean, if you look at the Internet of Things, right, is the way the way you know I look at it, and the way you know we look at it as working with our you know with many customers around Internet of Things based products and services that they're looking to bring to market is really that the internet of the data coming out of smart devices right is just another source of information that can tell you and influence uh, the factors that I was talking about right it's just another source of input and and that's the the you know the magnificent thing about the internet of things it's just the source of that data is much more real time it's very it's coming in very fast uh, it is, um, you know, it is highly, you know, it's, it's very low latency, meaning it's, it's just, uh, you know, based on events, something happens and data is here. I, I mean, we can give you many, many examples around that. As you said, let's take that driving example, right, where we can imagine autonomous driving uh, is, 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 a, is a basis of a lot of conversation today. But if you can imagine what the decisions the car has to take in order to drive itself, Right there's there's tons of them that that are happening. How close the front you know the car in front of you is, what's going on to the left and right of the car, what's happening inside the car, how comfortable you are or not, what you are doing in the car, uh, even the car seats you know have sensors that can you know inform the car about your comfort level and you know your stress level and all of those things. So you know these are all inputs that influence outcomes, and in this case, the outcome is the car driving itself and doing so safely. Uh, whereas, as in a business sense, you know, a a device that tells me or gives me a measure of of my my smart building, for example, uh, allows me to save money in you know real hard dollars around you know my operation efficiencies. Or if I'm a you know a, a business oriented to providing an IoT based product or service, where it might be in healthcare, for example, or even in public safety, for example, uh, I've spent some time at Motorola Solutions, and we did a lot of work around public safety and, and smart policing. You think about you know just uh, capturing all kinds of data from these different devices, whether it's the whether it's the whether it's the network itself, whether it's the radio that is connected to the you know uh, to the to the police officer, for example, or it could be the, the, the video stream that is being captured, whether it could be the car, uh, whether you know whether it's the um, you know police car in this case, whether it's the the firearm. I mean, all of these things have sensors now built in to understand when they're used, how they're used, what was the condition when it was being used. All of that stuff is available and can be used to actually make outcomes better. In this case, a, you know, a better policing experience in the healthcare space, a, you know, a healthier, more, uh, more informed uh, person. With that in mind, we're really talking about having a lot of actionable insights from the data. And what percentage of businesses do you think are truly ready to make those conclusions, right? I mean, you, once you identify a trend in your data or something that is really, really meaningful, how do you take that data and leverage it to run smarter? Yeah, I mean, there, the, one, the one way of doing that is to think about, you know, it comes back to the applications. I mean, if you think about when you talk about actionable, who's doing the action? It's at the end of the day, it's, it's most probably a human being that is doing the action, right? I mean, either your customer, you know, your sales reps, they're talking to a customer. It is a customer support person uh, speaking with a customer that has a problem 
you know, it is your field person going out there and servicing, you know, something for a customer. So at the end of the day, it's, it's the interactions and the touch points that you have with your customer that are where the actionable piece comes out <laughs> in the actionable insight. So the question is, how are those people that are, you know, in interfacing your customer, how are they doing that today? Most probably, they're doing that by some type of an application, right? So whether it may be, you know, I am ser I'm servicing some, uh, some, some um, asset in the field, I'm going to have some kind of a mobile device, I'm going to go there, um, and I will, you know, kind of record what I did. Or if I'm a customer support person, I probably have a web-based application, I'm looking at, you know, what the customer, you know, history is, etc., right? The, the idea of actionable insight is to actually embed intelligence in those applications so that the outcomes of that application itself is telling that person what is the next best action to do. And, and that's, the, that's the difference. It's embedding these static applications that are just reading data and presenting information to now reading data understanding and interf uh, interpreting that data, understanding how you know, best to react to that data and presenting those options you know, to that person. And, and that's where the advanced analytics comes into play. And that's how, you, you know, that's how you should think about operationalizing these insights. So really, the operationalization that you're talking about is moving to those intelligent applications that eliminate the human analysis from some of that process so that you go from just big data to real-time insights that are delivering value for customers. You, you are absolutely correct. And that's exactly, you know, um, what we want to do is we want to have intelligent applications. But let's take it one step further. So it's great that you can have intelligent applications. You, you mentioned uh, the term, you know, um, human interpretation. Right, so let's 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 look at the process. First, I get some data. I, you know, first of all, I need to have some data as a user, as a person. I view that data. I interpret what that data is saying. Then I analyze analyze that, and then I, you know, act upon it. Right. These are all things that are connected and how kind of things work. As far as intelligent applications go, yes, you want to embed the ability to reduce the need for the humans to actually interpret what the data is saying because you can take advantage of algorithms to uh, look at all the different internal and external factors that may have been influenced that particular thing you're doing and tell you and interpret it for you. So that reduces the time. But the next thing is taking the action part, right? So is there a way to or need to reduce taking actions from the humans as well? Uh, in many cases, it's not, but in some cases, as far as, let's say, Internet of Things goes, there may be. For example, can I, if, if it's an example of a, a farming example, can I turn off the water if it's raining? I can. Does a human have to go and turn the water off? No, the device has the ability to actually turn on and off. Smart homes, same thing. You know, we actually worked on a, on a really interesting um, scenario where you have people that, are, that can move around easily or have limitations uh, or have dementia or things like that, but they're in homes. They they have a they they live lives and you, you know and the the, ho the home or the kitchen can be smart about how it you know how it can uh, how it can uh, satisfy the needs for you know for those folks. Or it could be in in uh, as I mentioned in farming. Think about in in healthcare uh, as well. Uh, how can you know um, a device you know stop performing a certain function or start performing a certain function based on the embedded intelligence. And, you know, that's where we get into the, the power of embedded advanced analytics. There's a lot of predictions out there that you're going to see advances around delivering technology stacks that are integrating the key components. The public safety and healthcare, I think that those just seem to be such uh, topical areas where it seems like there's some amazing solutions. What are you seeing in, in that space? Uh, and healthcare, there's many, many different, you know, use cases and scenarios we can we can go into. But, uh, you know, one area that I feel is very exciting is, you know, how devices that improve people's lives are enabling the Internet of Things scenario. So, for example, we all are used to, you know, just our basic phones giving us better information about how we move, when we move, when we sleep, 
you know, how much we sleep, how much we sit, all of those things. But now take that, you know, one step further where you can improve people's lives who are, you know, who, who can't move uh, because of certain specific reasons. They have devices that can give you that and understand when you need to move and do that for you or when you need to breathe or if you're dementia, you can forget where you are. So being able to actually provide in your home the ability to know whether you are where you're supposed to be. Uh, and, you know, and when people fall, I mean, you know, there another another uh, area of, is when people get older, you know, they may fall. And so the question is, well, how do we, you know, how do we reduce that? And then finally, there's areas of, you know, your, uh, your uh, just your health itself. How do you do proactive health management? Uh, how do you involve your, your primary care and, you know, predicting and providing insights into, you know, what could your treatment plan should be? I mean, those are areas that are just scratching the surface, right? And I think Internet of Things and how we use and operationalize data are really connected to the heart of all that. Yeah, that's a, such a great example with healthcare because it really becomes the intersection of the healthcare environment, really important, impactful work that's being done by a lot of people in those industries right now. That's right. Absolutely. So if, if you, let's close on a question here that maybe takes us right back to square one for a lot of people who probably don't feel like they're really ready to go and tackle this big data thing. If you are in a position where you want to make some big decisions that are informed by the kind of data that your company is currently capturing, what is the first question that you ask? That's a very good, uh, very good question, and I, I know for a fact that a, a lot of customers that we work with are are in very similar, you know, kind of zone where they're trying to figure out what's, what and how, uh, and you know the thing that we advise them and work with them is first, first and foremost on the strategy. What is what is your strategic goals? You know, I mean, you know, if your is your strategic goal to reduce cost, improve your processes, create operational efficiencies, is it to generate net new revenue? And, and really, the use of that data has to be aligned to that particular strategy. And when you think about, uh, same thing with IoT as well, which really is connected to the big data element as well, it's all about, you know, you know, strategy. What is the ROI of me doing that, right? And I think a lot of times people stumble because they start off with a, you know, a, a proof of concept to see if this will work or that will work. And, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't, but there is no real business case around that. There is no specific ROIs around it. There is no understanding of once we actually get something from the data, how will, it, how will that person on the front line actually use it? What is that application that will be, you know, that they will use? How will we actually, you know, enhance customer experience? What elements of the customer journey does this improve? So it, it really isn't necessarily about technology. It really is more about ensuring that there is a business justification and a, you know, and a reason behind investing in this. And that will give you the focus and you know, not only you know, what data should you use, but what technology platform should be used, whether it's a cloud, whether it's on-premises, whether it's a hybrid. All of that stuff will just work out itself because we know that by doing this, we will actually deliver value to the end person who is going to benefit from dealing with your customer. And, and I think that's where I would encourage people to, to start with. Raheel, I want to thank you so much for all your wonderful thoughts and anecdotes today. I think our listeners have a better understanding of how big data is really a business function and where they can maybe start having conversations about their strategy to ultimately improve uh, that customer experience. I certainly look forward to it as a relatively heavy app user myself. Um, I hope you had fun having a conversation with this us today. This was great. And no, thank we'll you so much. really look forward to having you back again soon. Same here. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. I feel like this was one of the more profound conversations that I've had with someone about technology in a while because the big data topic just gets to be so transcendent. <laughs> if you don't live it every day, the one thing that I took from the conversation is that I don't want to use big again, but big data is a big decision. It's something that requires a whole level of planning and understanding and support that most organizations don't think about when they get into that into that area. 
Well, and there's this ever expanding universe of the way analytics can be digested in an easier and easier fashion. And yet the number of factors that are providing inputs to all of that is growing at the same rate. So or faster. Absolutely. And it comes back to something that we've really seen as a thread throughout the last few conversations on technomics, which is you have to be aimed at a specific goal and you have to adopt a specific strategy in order to really benefit from the opportunities that exist here. Absolutely. And that's that strategy and that plan has to be focused around your client and what they want. And what's the ROI, right? It's not just about, dare I even say this, on the customer engagement season of technomics, but it's not just about the customer. It's about what the business is doing to serve the customer and and trying to figure out where the ROI is. Because even if the demand may show you that there's the data may show you that there's a demand for something. The business may be able to look a layer deeper and see that really that is something else entirely. It can just unveil a whole other area of work that you didn't even know you should be doing. No, that's a great point. I think it all comes down to maybe who the end customer is of the information. But, but like you alluded to, is that at the end of the day, it always has to come back to making sure that your business is running smarter and supporting your client in the way that they, they want that support. Thanks for listening to Technomics. If you want to find more episodes, you can download the podcast from iTunes, Google, or your favorite podcast provider. And for more stories on intelligent technology, visit insight.com.